fighting it for more than a hundred years. Putting the most advanced technology into people's hands. Generation after generation. Tool after tool. Again and again. Bringing you the most reliable network of authorized sales and service dealers. Always moving forward. We lead, others follow. You've earned this, so hold it up high. Because it's the things you make. That show what you made. You are a fighter. And this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Hurry up, Agent. Only 20 seconds left. Uh-huh. But which wire should I cut? The red or the blue or the... Well, it's usually always the blue one. But there is also a green one and a yellow one. Oh, there. Red Bull. Behind you. Drink it now. Of course. Hmm. Too late. No Red Bull. No wings. What's up? Who are you? I'm your inner child. Get in. Listen, what you really need in life is some freaking torque. What? Horse power keeps you going, but torque gets you going. What happened to my inner child craving love and acceptance? How about you love and accept this? Power shot! <laughs> when can I drive? Dodge the Dodge Hornet RT. The totally torqued out crossover. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Competing for gold, we have legendary Reese's peanut butter cups versus newcomer Reese's medals. Who will be the winner? I'm sorry, what are they competing in? I'm a guy who lost a bet and my dignity. Get out of the way! As if watching my team lose wasn't punishment enough. Hey! What are you looking at, huh? What are you... It's a one speed! <laughs> <laughs> and if you have cut rate car insurance, odds are you'll be paying for that yourself. So get all state. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Hey! I'm walking here. This is the mark of a fighter. A rich, full-flavored lager with a crisp, refreshing taste. A reward for those with a fighting spirit. You've earned this, so hold it up high. Medela, the mark of a fighter. It's done. The goal of the year, part of the past. The celebrations, forgotten. The history, history. We're back to a blank slate. Clean ice. All that matters now is what happens next. The Stanley Cup playoffs begin Sunday on ESPN, ABC, and ESPN Plus. Bluetooth is offering their first month free so that you can try it out. Aid, shaving every day gets expensive. Harry's five blade razor offers me a close, comfortable shave. Best part, refills are as low as two bucks each, half of what I paid before. Go to harrys.com slash shave to claim your $7 trial. I just hurt my neck because I fell out of my chair because my boss just told me that our new starter pack just dropped. A solid stick of deodorant in the scent of your choice. A cream tube of deodorant in the scent of your choice. Plus two free items plus free shipping. Welcome back to NFL Live presented by Nationwide. We are one week from the draft. We're going to check in on the Denver Broncos and their 12th overall pick. Interesting spot. And head coach Sean Payton talked about the need for a quarterback earlier today. Do we have to draft a quarterback? You'd say, man, it sure looks like we have to draft a quarterback. And yet, um, it's it's got to be the right fit, the right one. And if we had the tip sheets as to who everyone else was taking, it'd be easier to answer that question. Um, and so that's the, that's the puzzle here. 
He was choosing his words carefully there, as you could see. The Broncos have been searching for stability at the QB position ever since Peyton Manning retired well, I mean, after the 2015 over. season, and they clearly haven't found it. Since Hello. Manning retired, Denver has used 13 different starting quarterbacks, which is tied with Washington for second most in the NFL. Only the Browns have used more. Philip Lindsay's on that list. He's a running back, Laura. Of course, that was the game during the COVID year. But, like, Field, to your point, he's on the list. It's no coincidence they've missed the playoffs in every season since Manning retired the second longest active drought in the NFL ahead of only the Jets. That's another way to look at it. Adam, what are you hearing about the plans for the quarterback position in Denver? Well, you heard Sean Payton talk about the fact that it's a puzzle. And I think part of the reason it's a puzzle is in a perfect world, yes, they'd like to get a quarterback. The question is, can they get one where they are picking or are they better off taking that number pick, number 12 pick, and turning it into a different player? I remember last year, the impact that the Lions offense had on Sean Payton. Denver faced them, and Sean Payton watched the way that the Lions drafted Jameer Gibbs in round one, Sam Laporta in round two, and he saw the way that the Lions used these jokers in their offense, and Sean Payton's like, I need to find myself a joker. Now the question is, is the quarterback he wants still available for him at 12, or does he feel he's better off going a different direction at that point? to strengthen the rest of the roster. They did sign Jared Stidham to a two-year deal. Ben DiNucci's behind him. Clearly, there's a need somewhere to get a quarterback. The question is whether he feels like a guy that he wants will be there at 12 to draft. We're going to hear from Field, but also Robert Griffin III is joining the show. I just want to make sure he gets his introduction when you'll see him in a second. But go ahead, Field. Okay, so Robert, uh, you might be available for the Broncos, right? Though we like having you here at ESPN, so don't go too far. But <laughs> it starts to sound, just taking Sean Payton's context and, and, and Shefty's insight right there into account. It starts to feel more and more like the idea of the Broncos taking a quarterback at pick 12 is far from a sure thing, especially because I believe the four who are regarded as the top four are, think, are all but certain to be gone by pick number 12. When Adam says, uh, but, but keep in mind, though, for the Denver Broncos, they don't have a second-round pick. So what I ask myself is if the, the Broncos do not take a quarterback in the, with their first pick, number 12 overall, does that create a pressure on Denver to have to find a quarterback with their subsequent pick at the beginning portion of the third round? Hmm. And is somebody like Spencer Rattler, as an example, of perhaps the seventh quarterback on the board going to be available there? And if he is... If, Bronco, if the Broncos try to move up a little bit for them, is a team going to say, well, if it's not Spencer Rattler for you, who is it? And thus demand a steeper price for Denver to move up. It's a fascinating situation for the Denver Broncos, but it does not sound like 12 is squarely in the mix. A quarterback is squarely in the mix at pick number 12, which makes for this to be one of the more interesting pressure points of the entire draft. Yeah, Phil, this is the most important draft in Sean Payton's Bronco tenure because of the decision he made of getting rid of Russell Wilson and taking that $85 million cap hit. I actually believe the two quarterbacks that are best for Sean Payton's scheme and offense actually will be there. It'll be Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix. Bo Nix has already had comparisons to Drew Brees and the way that he processes. Both of these guys give you something in the running game. They make great decisions in the passing game, and they both have a little bit of doubt surrounding them, which is something that Sean Payton covets. Mm. It was the same thing that was happening with Drew Brees when he came from the San Diego Chargers, and Sean Payton got the credit for making Drew Brees a Hall of Fame quarterback. So I think those are actually their best options. But a coach once told me, when you get your own team, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. And that's exactly what Sean Payton's going to abide by. Yeah, in Mellon Field's mock draft, Field has the Broncos taking Georgia tight end Brock Bowers with that 12th pick. But important to note, as you just pointed out, Robert, Penix and Knicks were also available, very likely that they would be at that point. Let's move to the Eagles, you guys. They had a brutal end to the season, losing six of their last seven games, including a blowout loss to the Bucks in the wild card. They got to work in the offseason, bringing in Saquon Barkley, but they lost Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey to retirement. There are also some changes to the coaching staff with new offensive and defensive coordinators in Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio. So Jalen Hurts talked about entering the season with another new OC. I find myself in a situation uh, very similar to college in terms of having a, a you know, constantly revolving you know thing and door um, in terms of coordinators and coaches um, but I've always managed to have success in it so that's uh, that's always been a good thing because you've been able to you know learn from people and, and apply it.
Yeah, it's important context there. You think about Jalen Hurts even losing his job in college to, to a tongue of Iloa and then, of course, transferring. He had many different coordinators that he dealt with. Hawk, do you expect another year with new coordinators to affect Jalen Hurts? I, I think so, and I hope, yeah. so, I hope it's in a positive manner because last year this offense, they had incredible talent. They still have great talent, but it seemed unimaginative. It seemed predictable. Jalen Hurts played uh, disjointed, mm -hmm. and you saw the frustrations boil over on the sideline, what it felt like was a bunch of A-list actors improving a movie, right? It didn't feel like it was a real game plan to it, and you need that mm. from Jalen Hurts, and you're hoping that this new offensive coordinator can help Jalen Hurts find a style he can rely on, independent of what kind of offense they're running, because the Eagles I mean, need it, this offense needs